if you're an American, listen up. I'm talking about the military industrial complex, who they are, how it works, and the massive amounts of money involved. Any American that does a bit more than just breathe has heard of our vaulted American military industrial complex. But what exactly is it? For want of a better word, it's a relationship, a power sharing, money making relationship that works well for all those involved. And yes, that relationship depends on death, destruction, and mayhem to generate massive amounts of profit for the involved players. But make no mistake thinking that this is some simple relationship, because it's anything but simple. First and foremost, our military industrial complex doesn't have a formal name, a formal office, or even a formal designation of any sort. In short, it doesn't really exist. In fact, no one had ever heard the name Military Industrial Complex until President Eisenhower warned us about the concept back in 1961 when he gave his presidential farewell address. In that address, Eisenhower made it clear that we should always be on guard against the influence of the military industrial complex. Now, so you know, our defense budget back in 61, the year of Eisenhower's warning, was $41 million. Adjusted for inflation, that's about $412 million in today's cold hard cash. For comparison, today's defense budget is a hair under $850 billion, a heck of a lot more than $412 million. Clearly, nobody nowhere and anywhere paid any damn attention to President Eisenhower, and the military-industrial complex has grown into, into an uncontrollable dark monster of its own making. And I'm not so sure if anything can be done to fight against the monster this relationship has become. So let's talk about this relationship, this complicated fucking relationship that involves politicians, of course, and generals, admirals, and all kinds of military personnel, which means it's going to be a lot of secrets being kept. Then there's the arms suppliers, the builders of all this death and destruction, and their lackeys, the lobbyists in Washington, buying those politicians. And then finally, there's the American people who have the final say. Uh, okay, that's a mistake. We the people don't have any say whatsoever. That said, plain and clear, let's turn to the politics involved and take a look at who's responsible in our government. And so you understand, it's not any given individual that's in control, but the position, better known as a committee member. And what government committees deal with our military industrial complex? First up, we have the Senate Appropriations Subcommittee on Defense, one of 12 subcommittees of the Senate's Committee on Appropriations. For those who are not educated, appropriations means to buy something. So the committee oversees everything our government wants to buy. So when our military makes a decision to buy something, how does that process work? Well, being efficient at everything they do, our military has a three-tiered approach to buying equipment. They have to identify the requirement for weapons. They have to allocate resources and then budget for it. And then they have to either develop or buy the weapons. And for each approach, there's a department to accomplish said goals. And once those said goals are reached, the project is put out to bid. And yes, the military has to take the lowest bid that meets specifications. But if there's good cause, they don't have to take the lowest bidder. This then is where the monster takes hold because there's little accountability where money goes and for what. When an organization loses track of 61% of its assets, you'd think the company would collapse, go under, cease to exist, or at the very least, have its CEO fired. <laughs> but not with the military. And you gotta wonder, why ain't anybody on any committee anywhere in government concerned about the lack of accountability? might just be because of how much money the corporate lobbyists are contributing to their campaigns. 
I ain't got no proof of that. Because it's all a big money game. Do you really believe nobody knows where 61% of the military assets are? Well, I don't, not for a second. And I haven't even gone into black projects, you know, secret projects like building super secret weapons or back engine UFOs. Hell, I, who knows what they're all up to. And I haven't even talked about the relationship between major contractors and the military. And I'm just left thinking the bottom line is we'll never know much about this military complex until it all comes crashing down. Here's to our vaulted military industrial complex. That, you know, I don't have any doubts that at some point in time, and it might be 10 years, 20 years, or 100 years, it's just going to collapse. And it's probably not going to be 100 years, I'm telling you that right now. My kids will probably see it happen in their lifetime. There's a slight chance I might see it happen in my lifetime, but probably not. I mean, you can't, you can't be missing billions of dollars and not know where shit is. And even if you think you know where it is, it's not where you think it is, I'm sure. But, <clears throat> it, you, you know, it's just absolute craziness that, that everybody knows about this, everybody talks about it, but eh, it's just business as usual. <laughs> You know, I, uh, maybe I maybe I'm an outlier. I could be. I don't know. Maybe I'm the weird one. Maybe maybe that's the way it's supposed to be. I had, would struggle with believing that, but I don't know. I do want to tell you. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment. I don't know. Blow me a kiss? Okay. I could just say blow me and forget the kiss, but that ain't going to work. <laughs> I'm getting old. I love you. I'm out of here. Have a great day, my friends.